Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the heart of God to fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw you near to the throne of God's grace, to receive his mercy for your failures, and to find grace to help in good time for every need, that appropriate help coming just when you need it. And one of those things that you need in life, because we have an enemy out there, is to know that you are worthy in God's sight, to know that you're forgiven, and to know that there is no condemnation of you who is in Christ Jesus. God himself has provided the sacrifice for your sin, debt. You don't owe it. God paid the price for you so that you can receive it as his free gift. But many people can forgive others, and they can forgive them people around them, but they have a difficult time of forgiving themselves. They keep having a memory of an old sin come up or multiple sins come up, and they can't imagine how God can forgive them of what they did. They can forgive others, but they can't understand why God would forgive them. God forgave you because he loves you, and he wants the absolute best for you, and he doesn't want you in the bondage of the enemy. Don't misunderstand me. The Holy Spirit will convict you of sin. And those whom God loves, he disciplines. But there is a bondage that goes beyond God convicting to help you, to grow you, that actually holds you back and suppresses you and grips you and holds you like a shackle in bondage because you won't be able to see things from God's point of view when you're feeling guilt and shame because you don't even want to look up and see what he has good for you. But God does have good for you. He loves you. There's nothing that you can do that would make him love you any less, and there's nothing you can do to make him love you any more. God has told you that you are his dear, precious, beloved child and that he did everything in his ability to make a way for you to get to him and to come to him and have a personal relationship with him through Jesus Christ, his son. And he did that by paying a great price for you. And he who paid a great price for you, he definitely wants you to come boldly to his throne of grace. God tells you as your father that he has delivered you and drawn you to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and he has transferred you into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom you have redemption through his blood which means that your sins are forgiven that means your current sin your past sin and your future sin god has forgiven you that's colossians 1 13 and 14 so now you being in christ jesus you have redemption You have deliverance. You have salvation through his blood. The remission and the forgiveness of all your trespasses and shortcomings and your uh, sins. That's in accordance with the riches of his generosity, of his gracious favor, his grace. As he says in Ephesians 2.8, it's by his grace, God's unmerited favor, that you were saved delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is never of yourself. It's not of your own doing. It didn't come from your own striving. It's the gift of God given to you because he loves you. And God's the one that empowers you to overcome that spiritual force of sin. It's God who says to you in Colossians and Ephesians that your sins have already been forgiven. Did you hear that? God has already forgiven you of your sins. When you confess your sins before God, that's not the time that you learned about it. God knows all the days of your life. He wrote them in his book, and he knows what temptations are chasing you and falling after you and trying to get you to stumble. And he sees what's behind every situation and circumstance in life. You're facing a spiritual battle with sin 
Sin is a spiritual disease that causes you to be at dis-ease when you're in it. And it causes you to be dis-ease when you don't give yourself the forgiveness that God gives you. God says, I forgive you. So you're forgiven. You don't have to ask God to forgive you for something he's already done. Just like you don't have to ask him to save you. Once he's already saved you, you don't have to ask him to forgive you once you're forgiven. What you do have to do is so that you don't feel this condemnation and you don't feel this guilt, and this unworthiness that the enemy brings across you. You just have to agree with the Holy Spirit, what he says about whatever action or deed that you are involved in that does not line up with what God wants you to do for your life. God says to come to him and to repent. That means to change direction. But even in repenting, it requires God's ability to help you repent. You can't lease, loose yourself from a spiritual problem with a natural solution. It requires God's power, the power of God, to work, and which is at work effectively in you, giving you the very power and desire to want to do those things that God wants you to do. It's God's power that breaks that power. It's you and your heart who chooses that you want to make a change. And then God comes to your aid and support to help you in that change. God loves you and he wants the absolute best for you. So he gives you his aid and support. You make the decision to change and then he sits there and comes to your aid. He's already at your aid. He's already fighting back and pushing back those powers of darkness that are against you. He's already helping you. But you won't see it until you see from God's perspective. And when you sin, your eyes become blinded to what God's doing around you. So you repent. You change and exchange that thing you were doing with the thing that God wants you to do. That's true repentance. It's when you change and turn direction. And then you allow God to give you the power and the desire to accomplish what he wants you to accomplish and not depending on yourself. Because if you could have done it yourself, you'd have never fallen in the problem to start with. God is on your side and he is for you. There's nothing that can be against you. He makes you more than a conqueror. He makes you a victor in Christ Jesus. You remember, when you get born again, you're no longer the same person. Spiritually, you have been changed. The spirit of the living God has came to live in you and through you. And now you are a child of the living God, born of the spirit of God. The very temple of the spirit of God is in you. You are. Have God living in you. That's the great mystery in Christ. That Christ comes to live in you. And it's his power. It's his desire in you. That causes you to want to do those things that God wants you to do. Natural man can't do the things that God wants him to do. Because he's not knowing God. He doesn't know God. He's not filled with the spirit of God. So he can't know the things. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 through 16 tells you. You have to have the Holy Spirit of God. And that only comes because it's God's he's because he's God's gift when you're born again. And when you are, then you have received him and you who have him, I can tell you from experience that when you do something that is not in line with what God wants you to do, God will quicken your spirit. He will sit there and tell you, I didn't like that. You need to change. I want you to do this. And you'll be reluctant. You won't feel like it. You might not want to even do it. But that's not the issue. Your feelings do not come first and then you do the action. You do what God says, whether you feel like it or not. And then he gives you the very desire and the power and the glory and the victory for making the decision to choose to do what he said to do. It's God who's directing you. He tells you. 
It's no longer you who lives. It's Christ who lives in you. He tells you in Colossians 3, 3, 3, that you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. It's no longer you who makes those decisions. It's God in you giving you the power and the desire to want to do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And because God has already promised and made these things true to you, you can boldly say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not fear, I shall not be concerned, I shall not be worried, I shall not be guilty feeling, I shall not be unworthy, I shall not be condemned. For greater is he that's in me than he who is in the world. Listen, the lie of the enemy is to get you to feel unworthy and to feel condemned so that you can't receive anything from God. It's just the simple truth. God says you're worthy, so you're worthy. God says you're forgiven, so you're forgiven. God says you're not guilty and you're acquitted and completely exonerated from all charges against you. But you've got an enemy out there who's the accuser of the brethren, just as he says in Revelation 12. He is not there to help you. He's there to destroy you. Just as John 10.10 says, Christ came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. But the enemy comes, listen, to kill, to steal, and destroy you. He's not for you. He's jealous of Christ. He wants everything that's related to Christ to be gone, and he tries to destroy it. But you're not going to be destroyed because God is greater in you than he who is in the world. There are many, many times that people don't understand that God has forgiven them. Yes, he has forgiven you. There may be other people that demand that you do certain things so that you can get God's forgiveness. Let me tell you something. Those people are hoodwinked. Those people are listening to a lie of the devil. They're saying that you have to do things to please me. And in the way I think, so that I'll forgive you, that way you know that God's forgiven you. That is not true. God forgives you based on your choice of your heart to choose him and go in his direction. Not based on what somebody tells you or what somebody else wants you to do. It's what you have to do before God. It's a personal relationship between you and God. And God says, you follow his instruction, and he'll take care of everything around you. Those that want you to come to them, you have to be very cautious. Because they're wanting to control, and they're wanting to have control over your life. And there's only one person that should have control over your life. And that's God himself, the one who created you, the one who made you, the one who sets you free by his own blood shed on the cross. That's the one you look to. Fix your eyes on him, not on the other people, and he will guide you and direct you in the way in which you should go. If you have him dwelling in you, if you don't, then you need to accept Christ right now. Accept Christ. Tell him, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Lead me not into trespasses and open up my eyes and see the world around me. Forgive me of my sin and my problems and the things I've been involved in. And help me right now to walk in your power and your might and fill me with your presence that I may be pleasing to you in Jesus' name. If you pray that, then God has forgiven you. You've made a choice, and God's coming to your aid and support. There's no reason for you to feel guilt and condemnation anymore. So I want to pray for you right now that you know that God knows you completely, and there's nothing hidden in his sight, that he knows the intentions of your heart. He knows every step you're going to make and every change. He knows what you're going to do before you do it, and that he's the one giving you the power and the might to do the things that you need to do. Listen, guilt is not experience that you have to to go through if you have trusted in Christ because God forgives you. 
So it's my prayer right now that you'll be able to stand against the accuser of the brethren and having done all to stand in the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus and that you are able to do greater in standing than you've ever been able to do before because that spirit of guilt and condemnation and unworthiness is broken over your life in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I just pray right now. I acknowledge to you my sins. And I thank you that I have confessed all my sins before you. And as I do, I just thank you that I don't cover up anything. I'm naked and bare before you. There's nothing I can hide from you. So I just thank you, Father God, for forgiving me of my sins and my guilts and my inequities and my trespasses. And I thank you for having mercy on me and freely pardon me and acquitting me and by the blood of Jesus Christ, redeeming me back to yourself. Thank you, Father. Father, your word declares that if I ask forgiveness, you'll forgive me and you'll cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to believe and help me to receive my forgiveness for past and present sins. Help me to forgive myself, for I confess that Jesus is my Lord, and I believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead. So I know I'm saved and forgiven because you have done it in me and for me. I thank you, Father, for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He says that whatever I ask in prayer, being persuaded by you, that I really believe it and that I have it. And I thank you that I exchange my dirty, rotten thoughts of unworthiness and guilt and condemnation for your worthy thoughts and your gracious thoughts and your merciful thoughts and your loving kindness and tender mercies toward me. Forgive me for holding on to anything I shouldn't have been holding on to. Forgive me for holding on to guilt, condemnation. Forgive me for being spurred on by the enemy to do wrong things and to do and accept wrong actions and thoughts. Thank you, Father God, that you are for me and that you love me and that you have forgiven me and set me free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for giving me a fresh start, for watching over me and cleaning my slate and cleaning the slates of these, Father God, that I'm praying for. For this is my prayer for them. I thank you for holding nothing against us. I thank you, behold, Father God, that you forgive us and that you have hidden us in your Son, Jesus Christ, in the kingdom of heaven, and the enemy cannot touch us. Father, I break that power of feelings of guilt and unworthiness and condemnation over those who are listening in the name of Jesus right now. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Your life is set free. I break the power of guilt and condemnation and unworthiness. Those enemy fiery darts that have been shot and lodged into you, they are broken, taken out, and you are healed in Jesus' name. Receive your forgiveness. Forget those feelings and call them gone in the name of Jesus. Walk in what the finished sacrifice of Jesus Christ did. And understand that the power of his resurrection guarantees your freedom from that sin and guilt and condemnation. I thank you, Father, for blessing us. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of all our trespasses and sins and our transgressions. And removing them as far as the east is from the west. And I thank you for blessing us and not counting our sins against us. But always showing us your mercy and your kind and great love for us. Now, Father, I just thank you for actually picking us out for yourself in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart. And it's by the effective work of your power in us that you maintain that in us and through us. And thank you for coming to into our hearts, Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us and shining your light on the areas of darkness that need to go away. And thank you for shining light on those spirit of flaming darts of condemnation and unworthiness and guilt 
that are not from you. They're not from you. I thank you, Father God, for your boldness to come into us and draw us to yourself, to seek your forgiveness, the remission of our sins, and to repent and turn from our shortcomings and trespasses, and to come into and be drawn by you to your throne of grace to receive mercy for our failures and help in time of need. I thank you, Father God, that we have received your Son, Jesus Christ, and that you, Lord, are helping us in every situation and circumstance. I thank you, Father God, for forgiving us and absolving us of all guilt and condemnation and unworthiness. I thank you for setting us free For you set the captives free. And we have been captive by that spirit of unworthiness and condemnation and guilt. And because we're free, you tell us. You have given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. And you've given us the mind of Christ to know those things that you have freely given us along with your Holy Spirit. So I thank you for making us a world overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of your testimony, in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, God has forgiven you. God will not forsake you. He is consciously, constantly, continually, always with you. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust him. Don't trust yourself or even others. Trust the word of God. And make a choice. And with that choice that you make, you'll find God coming to your aid and support and giving you the power and desire, just as he promises in Philippians 2.13, to set you free from the law of sin and death that would try to hold you in bondage. Now thank God and praise him. Just thank God for his mercy and his goodness to you in the name of Jesus, because God loves you, and he loves you very much, and I love you. And Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God, we praise you and accept your forgiveness from our guilt, condemnation, and shame. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.